This will be a brief PowerPoint recording reviewing sleep stage scoring with some images that I have. Here is a epic of wake. So during wake sleep what we see are these um, high frequency waves. These are alpha waves. So to orient us to these following pages of a polysomnogram study. We have the right eye, the left eye, um, C4, um, I'm not sure which one that is for at, to be absolutely positive, but these three here are your EEG brain waves. The chin, right and left leg, EKG, nasal, airflow, thorax, abdomen, and sound. These are a little bit older studies, so they don't show two recordings of airflow, just one. So this is wake. Wake, what we see is the eyes are closed, and with the eyes closed, we get these um, real visible alpha waves. Here is another close-up version of wake stage. Again, we have our right eye and our left eye, these three EEG channels and the chin. So those are that alpha rhythm, which again is defined as a frequency, which is 8 to 13 hertz. And um, and that's awake. We would score that as a stage awake. This is still awake, but this picture I show you, because it's a good one of, of the change when the eyes are open. So here in this first part of the epic we have eyes closed and we see these really clear alpha waves. Then we start to see these eye movements that could almost fool us to thinking it's REM if we just looked at the eyes. But we still see alpha activity is just definitely decreased if it was compared to the alpha activity in this first segment of the epic. And our other dead giveaway that it's awake is that the the chin muscle is really active. It's a really large signal there. Here's a stage one. What we see here is a reduction in amplitude of the waveforms and we see what we would call slow rolling eye movements or um, these kind of, the eyes are moving but it's definitely not very not very fast. So generally what we look for in stage one is a slowing of the background frequency um, and the cycles per second drops to maybe four to seven hertz or cycles per second and the presence of those slow rolling eye movements. Here's an example of stage two. What we see here are these bursts of several, and what I'm pointing to on my cursor are sleep spindles. Um, I don't see any definite K complexes within this, within this epic, but this would be scored N2. Here's a close-up of some more sleep spindles. This again is sleep stage two. There would be a K complex. Sorry, K complex being right there. Um, again, I mentioned this is an older sleep study, but this would be stage, we've switched this stage to just being N3 instead of stage four, so this would be N3. Again, this is scored when 20% when or more of a 30-second epic contains slow wave activity. So when we say slow wave, we're looking at 0.5 to 2 hertz or cycles per second with an amplitude greater than 75 microvolts. So that would be N3. Here is an example of stage R, or REM sleep. What we see here is a reduction in the amplitude in the chin, a slowing of the frequency of the background EEG, 
and rapid quick eye movements. We don't always have to have eye movements to score an epic of REM, but the, this makes it real obvious. Here's another example of REM sleep. Again, rapid eyes, really quiet EEG tracings, and a reduction in the amplitude in the chin. Oh, this is another picture of that stage four, um, N3 sleep. The slow wave sleep is what it's also referred to. The next couple epics just show some different disturbances in the sleep. This particular one is an arousal, and it appears that maybe this arousal was caused from this snore. The patient's going along asleep, and here they break into this brief arousal that disrupts their sleep, but then you see they quickly go back into sleep. So these arousals are defined as kind of three to five second changes in that EEG frequency. Here's an obstructive, here's a very long obstructive apnea example, 45 seconds. Again, we see no flow with continual effort, although it's reduced in comparison to here because to, to reopen the airway takes a lot of force. On this one, the EEG and other tracings have been reduced to focus on the obstructive event. Our next epic shows a, some EEG channels, but these have been condensed, so they're difficult to point out. But in either case, this would show, again, airflow and two effort channels showing a hypopnea where we didn't see a desaturation, but there was an arousal scored with that hypopnea. Here's an example of another hypopnea. Again, hypopnea is a reduction in airflow with continual effort. Here's a demonstration of a series of various obstructive events. And this event here actually looks like it may be able to be scored as a mixed event because it looks like there's a section of this where there is very little effort. And then we definitely see the effort return. This was a drawing I had done to help identify some of these parameters that we're looking at when we write up the sleep study report. So here we have lights off at this point. We're awake during these red segment segments. We have sleep onset that we track. We track the time from sleep onset to REM onset. We have these periods of awakenings throughout the study. The patient wakes up, and shortly after they wake up, then the lights are turned on. So when we calculate total sleep time, total sleep time is equal to the time in bed minus these periods of wakefulness. Um, so it's this time in bed period minus any awakenings. Time in bed, then, is equal to the time from lights off to lights on, that larger segment. Total sleep time, oops, this is actually incorrect. This is not, total sleep time is equal to the time from sleep onset to wake up time minus these awakenings within here. Your book does provide a good definition of these. That concludes this short recording. I would emphasize just going back and looking slowly at each of the stage transitions along with the examples in your text to help better understand sleep stage recognition. And from our course, it really is just an, being able to recognize the sleep stages enough that they can be differentiated, not necessarily always identified in passing, but be able to differentiate those.